Imagine a world where survival wasn't just a challenge, but a near impossibility. Prey vanished in seconds, torn apart by razor-sharp fangs, or crushed by sheer brute force. In the Pleistocene epoch, the Earth was not a friendly place. Every shadow, every glint of movement could mean a predator's gaze locking onto you. And let's be honest, survival wasn't about being brave, it was about being invisible. The apex predators of that time weren't just animals. They were walking nightmares built by evolution to hunt, kill, and dominate. Humans didn't sit at the top of the food chain. We were at the very bottom, vulnerable to everything that moved. Now imagine being there, the chill of the ice age biting your skin, the darkness pressing in, and predators lurking just out of sight. This was life a million years ago, a time when every day felt borrowed and survival was a gamble you rarely won. The Pleistocene landscape was not for the faint-hearted. It was a sprawling battleground where predators and prey clashed in a never-ending cycle of life and death. Europe, for instance, was a tapestry of vast grasslands, dense forests, and icy tundras, each filled with creatures beyond anything we see today. At the top of the food chain were the European cave lions, creatures far larger and more ferocious than their modern descendants. These lions didn't just hunt, they strategized, stalking massive prey like aurochs and mammoths. Their strength wasn't just in numbers, but in their precision. Imagine a pride of these lions working together, driving a panicked mammoth into a trap. One misstep, one wrong move, and even the largest prey became dinner. And then there was the cave hyena. Forget today's scavenger stereotype. These were pack hunters capable of taking down prey as large as a rhinoceros. Their jaws could crush bones like twigs, and their pack coordination was a symphony of death. If a cave hyena pack caught your scent, you weren't running. You were dying. But not all predators relied on brute force. The Neanderthal leopard, an apex ambusher, blended seamlessly into the environment. Its attack was swift, silent, and almost always fatal. It didn't just kill. It erased its prey from existence before they even knew they were being hunted. Beyond Europe, the Americas were home to a different breed of terror. Take the short-faced bear, for example, a predator so massive it could intimidate even dire wolves. It didn't need to hunt to dominate. Its sheer size allowed it to steal kills from smaller predators, asserting its dominance with a single roar. Imagine being a dire wolf pack fresh off a hard-earned kill, only to see a short-faced bear lumbering toward you. You didn't fight, you fled. And speaking of dire wolves, they were more than just oversized wolves. Their bone-crushing jaws and pack mentality made them the ultimate cooperative hunters. But they were also opportunists, scavenging kills from rivals or even turning on weaker pack members in desperate times. This wasn't just survival. It was brutal, raw nature at its core. In the icy waters off Sardinia, danger lurked beneath the surface. Giant otters, nearly the size of modern jaguars, were apex aquatic predators. These creatures weren't playful river dwellers. They were ruthless hunters, ambushing seals and fish with a ferocity that rivaled anything on land. Sardinia's waters weren't a haven. They were a hunting ground. It wasn't just animals that posed a threat. The Pleistocene was a time when multiple human species coexisted and the competition wasn't friendly. Neanderthals, for example, were stronger and more physically adapted to cold climates than Homo sapiens. Their survival skills were unmatched. They could track prey through blizzards, craft weapons from bones, and endure conditions that would kill us in hours. Then there were the Denisovans, a mysterious branch of humanity whose legacy we're still uncovering. Genetic evidence suggests they thrived in harsh, high-altitude environments like the Himalayas. Imagine competing with a species better suited to the cold, stronger than you, 
and just as intelligent. And it wasn't just competition, it was conflict. Archaeological evidence hints at violent clashes between early humans and other hominins. A fractured skull here, a shattered spearhead there. They tell the story of a brutal struggle for resources, territory, and survival. We weren't just surviving the predators. We were surviving each other. For much of the Pleistocene, humans weren't hunters. We were hunted. Imagine being part of a small tribe huddled around a fire in a cave, hoping the flickering flames would keep the darkness and the predators at bay. Outside, the sounds of the night weren't just unsettling. They were terrifying. Polar bears, larger and more aggressive than today's, roamed the tundra in search of seals or anything else that moved. A single encounter with one of these behemoths could wipe out an entire family. And then there were the cave bears, massive herbivores with a surprising taste for meat when food was scarce. Sharing a cave with one wasn't a choice. It was a death sentence. Even birds weren't safe. The host's eagle of New Zealand with a wingspan of of over three meters was a predator that specialized in taking down MOA giant flightless birds. But if humans crossed its path, they weren't spared. Imagine looking up and seeing a shadow descending at 80 kilometers per hour, talons outstretched. You wouldn't have time to scream. So, how did we go from prey to predator? The answer lies not in strength or speed, but in ingenuity. Early humans developed tools not just for hunting, but for survival. Fire wasn't just a source of warmth. It was a weapon, a deterrent, and a signal of safety. Spears allowed us to strike from a distance, reducing the risk of close encounters with predators. But perhaps our greatest weapon was cooperation. Alone, a human stood no chance against a lion or bear. Together, we became a force to be reckoned with. Tribes formed hunting parties using coordinated attacks to take down massive prey or defend against predators. This wasn't just survival, it was strategy. Over generations, humans began to turn the tables. We became the hunters, targeting not just prey, but the predators that threatened us. Cave paintings from this time don't just depict hunts. They tell stories of triumph, of humans standing victorious over the very creatures that once ruled them. But our rise came at a cost. As humans spread across the globe, the predators that had dominated for millennia began to vanish. Climate change played a role, but so did our actions. We didn't just hunt for food. We hunted to eliminate threats. The megafauna that had once defined the Pleistocene began to disappear. Mammoths, giant sloths, saber-toothed cats all fell victim to a combination of environmental shifts and human expansion. The balance of nature tipped, and the predators that had once terrorized us found themselves outmatched by a species that didn't rely on strength or speed, but on relentless adaptability. Today, we look back at the Pleistocene with awe and fascination. The predators of that era were more than just animals. They were legends, creatures that pushed the boundaries of what nature could create. And yet, here we are, the last survivors of a world that belonged to them. But let's not forget how close we came to extinction ourselves. We weren't conquerors. We were survivors clinging to existence in a world that seemed designed to destroy us. The fact that we're here today is nothing short of a miracle, a testament to the resilience of a species that had no right to make it this far. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like and the subscribe, and we'll meet again in next video.